Dan Reincarnation Chapter Returned Sayana and Signod became caught up in a tearful reunion, and Eugene felt numerous, blatant gazes fixed on him. No one had spoken yet, but Eugene was well aware of what these stares demanded from him. Um, Eugene cleared his throat while stepping forward, Eugene locked eyes with Jalid briefly, and he understood Eugene's intentions and made way, even Jalid, who maintained a stern expression, had to swallow hard in anticipation of what was about to be revealed, his eyes were sparkling, all right, all right, I know what you're all expecting so please step back a bit. This is rather large and needs enough room, said Eugene, as soon as enough space was made, Eugene made rough calculations in his head before flying up into the sky, then, he removed his cloak and shook it lightly toward the ground, Quoom, the massive corpse of a dragon fell out from within the fluttering cloak, people screamed in terror and astonishment at the sight of the dragon's body, which was even larger than the manor, wait, wait, don't come close, it's dead and won't suddenly come back to life, as you all know. However, this is the body of the demon dragon Rezekia, right? It hasn't been fully purified yet, so if you touch it carelessly, you might catch a strange disease, said Eugene. All he did was seal it so it wouldn't smell from within the cloak. Because of Rezekia's enormous size, Eugene had not been able to proceed with the purification during his return journey from Sama. The dragon... It's a real dragon. In red, come. The Lionheart clan was the most famous family of warriors on the continent, even if they weren't descended from the lineage of the main family. Nearly all who grew up with the Lionheart name became knights or military officers. Consequently, people of the Lionheart clan had been exposed to monsters from a young age, and those who joined the Blackland Knights typically received a weapon each of all the monsters they had seen so far. The Wyvern was the closest they had ever known to a dragon, however, they now realized how ludicrous and disrespectful such a comparison was to the race of dragons. Everyone who saw Rezakia's corpse felt the overwhelming presence, even from a dead body. The creature was something that couldn't be simply dismissed as a monster. When the purification is complete, Eugene began his explanation, sitting atop Rezakia's head. This enormous trophy will, of course, become the property of the main house of the Lionheart clan, it's far too big for me to monopolize, the dragon heart was smashed, and Rezakia's blood was unusable, nonetheless, plenty of things could be used as materials from a dragon's corpse, including its scales, leather, bones and teeth, given Rezakia's enormous size, the corpse would provide enough materials to arm all of the white lion and black lion knights, armor and weapons. It should be just enough, if there's a shortage, they can use the materials only on the crucial parts. This should be ample penance for the commotion he has caused so far, not to mention any future ones he might stir up. As Eugene contemplated the situation, his gaze naturally drifted toward Ancilla. Ancilla, always a picture of noble grace, had a habit of hiding her face behind her fan when her emotions threatened to betray her, however, today, she stood agape. Her eyes locked onto the corpse of Rezakia. It was clear that she was unable to make any attempt at composure. The towering mountain of financial worries she held for her estate, the cost of elves living taxes, and more was no melting like snow in her mind. Unfortunately, however, it wasn't as simple as it seemed. Even if one were to search the entire continent at that moment, would they find a craftsman capable of working with? Materials from a dragon. If such a craftsman existed, they would likely be a dwarf, but even a dwarf would not have experience working with a dragon, of course, these concerns were not immediately Eugene's to ponder, arranging for a suitable craftsman would be a task for Dolid and Ancilla, all Eugene needed to do was present the spoils and bask in the praises of the family's blessing, Eugene Lionheart, the Blood Lion, Dragon Slayer, the reincarnation of the great Vermouth. Hero. Praises such as these, which had been embarrassing and discomforting only moments ago, were starting to warm his spirits. It was said that flattery could make even a bear dance, and Eugene was no simpleton like a bear. He tried to suppress the grin that was beginning to form on his face, should he raise his fist in triumph. No, he thought it best to avoid any grand, cringy gestures that might later fill him with regret, 
and so, Eugene did nothing, he simply let the cheers wash over him, and when the time felt right, he descended from atop Rosakia's head, Oh sister, did you see Sir Eugene's smile just now? It was truly befitting of a world-saving hero, Christina thought with her hands clasped over her heart, however, unbefitting her character, Anais remained silent at Christina's remark, Anais never denied her infatuation for Hamel, just as Christina did not hide hers, but as of late, Anais had begun to notice a concerning intensification in Christina's adoration, due to their upbringing, Christina inherently possessed a certain cynicism. Having shared a similar environment, Anais could relate to this aspect of Christina's personality, however, ever since their salvation at the hands of Eugene, Christina's mind had bloomed like a flower garden when it came to any thoughts regarding him, unfortunately, it wasn't a garden of merely bright and pretty flowers, but a murky, sinister one, influenced by her cohabitant, Anais, it seemed this was an inherent trait of Christina's and something she shared with Anais, the problem was Christina's ominous desires and views started to surpass even Anais's imaginings, which made Anais fear that she might have awakened these monstrous desires in her counterpart, to be of such an age, and to have no sense of shame, grumbled Signard quietly, he knew that Eugene was the reincarnation of Hamel from three hundred years ago, thus, as Eugene revealed in the cheers of the multitude, Signard could not help but find the spectacle of delight rather pitiful in its blatant display. Sina, you do see that Hamel appears a bit too intoxicated by the thrill. Why such a face? said Signard. It's nothing, nothing at all, brother. Sina had indulged in even greater exhilaration than Eugene in a rough. She had relished the cheers of tens of thousands in a crowd while even soaring into the sky in enjoyment. During her tours of the towers and the guild, she had proudly displayed herself to the wizards of the present age as if it had been a matter of course. So, when she heard Segnard's words, they stabbed at her heart. I heard you were afflicted with the demonic disease. Are you truly well? She had heard about Signard from Eugene, as she remembered it, Sina's last encounter with Signard was after the war had ended, it was during the Elf's Requiem, which was held in front of the World Tree, Elves were inherently not prolific, and their numbers rarely increased, moreover, too many Elves had died in the war three hundred years ago, the massacre had been led by the Dark Elves under the command of the Rakshas of Princess Aris, who had been serving the Demon King of Fury. Iris herself had been an elf ranger, and having a complete understanding of the elves, she had led the dark elves to hunt the elves in unimaginable ways, they had burned down entire forests, taken elves hostage, tortured them, and brutally murdered them before displaying their corpses for all to see, why had she not killed Iris, why had she not avenged their brethren, many elves had asked Sienna this during the requiem, naturally, Sienna had wanted to kill Iris as well, she had slain the demon king of fury but missed killing Iris and Oberon, as a beast folk. Oberon had been none of Sienna's concern, but Iris was an enemy she had to kill, but at the time, she had not been given an opportunity to hunt down Iris, the demon king of incarceration had shown mercy, and they had barely achieved peace through Vomoth. The war had finally ended like that, so how could Sienna have just marched into Helmuth and killed Iris? she simply could not do such a thing, she held back, she wanted to kill Iris, but Serena decided to wait until she was ready, the elves at the requiem had accepted her determination, Signard had accepted it at that moment too, but elves lived too long, decades passed, and Signard was still dreaming of the battlefield as a young elf, still remembering the friends who had been killed by Iris, so, he left the forest of the elves, he didn't go to see Serena in Aruth, instead, he had set off for Helmuth, armed only with a desire for revenge and hatred, he had not considered whether it was possible. He had just filled his mind with the idea of killing Iris, if he hadn't left the forest, Signard wouldn't have caught the demonic disease, and even after contracting the disease Signard wandered the forest of Samor for hundreds of years without returning to his homeland, it was because Sienna had hidden the location of the great forest. Sienna could only feel guilty regarding this matter towards Signard, I'm alright, although it's not a disease that gets better little by little, 
it hasn't gotten worse. Sagnard had known Sina since she was an infant, despite not sharing the same blood or being of the same race. Sagnard truly thought of Sina as his little sister. He felt distressed and sorry to see Sina feeling guilty, so he gave her a big smile as if to prove a point. Someday, someday. It's bound to get better. Once all the demon kings are slain, there's no way this disease will persist, and soon, Iris, that traitorous elf too, will meet her end. Shana spoke while shifting her gaze to Eugene. Sagnard watched Sienna's changing expression through the slits of his eyes. Despite her strong-willed, rather annoying appearance, there was no trace of mockery on Sienna's face. Sienna, you surely aren't still hung up on Hamel, are you? Sagnard asked after a while. But brother, what are you saying all of a sudden? Sienna retorted, seemingly taken aback. Sigurd's eyes grew colder at her response. She thought her feelings for Hamel had remained concealed for centuries, but that was not at all true. Perhaps it might be the case for those with whom she shared only a brief interaction, but anyone who had formed a substantial relationship with Sina, no matter how obtuse, would have recognized her lingering attention for Hamel. Although that fool Hamel seemed to be unaware, Sigurd continued to regard Sina through his narrowed eyes. 300 years of age. It was an astounding age by human standards, but not for an elf. Thus, Sagnard perceived his younger sister as still in the bloom of her youth. Moreover, he saw her as beautiful as any elf. Was that all? Sina was touted as the wise Sina by the entire world. Could there be another woman with such credentials? On the other hand, what about Hamel? He was a man who died three centuries ago and was resurrected. Sigurd acknowledged that even in his previous life, Hamel had many merits. After reincarnation, those merits seemed to have multiplied the prestige of his family, his own capabilities, and even his physical appearance. But, but, despite all that, Sigurd believed Sienna deserved better. The fool, Hamel, seemed to have failed to notice Sienna's feelings even after three hundred years, which only strengthened Sigurd's thoughts and judging by her consistent oblivious act, Serena also seemed to have no intention of confessing her feelings to Eugene. In that brief moment, Sonad found himself immersed in deep thoughts. Personally, he thought it best if Serena found someone else, someone better than Hamel. He didn't have such thoughts just because Hamel had given him a sound beating in the past. It was simply that Sonad didn't want to hand over his undeniably brilliant sister to such a fool, but that was merely Sonad's personal wish. As an elf who had lived for centuries, he understood that his sister's wishes were more important than his own in matters like these. I'll help you, said Sagnard. Oh what? Sina, knowing you, you probably haven't confessed your feelings to Hamel yet. So, let me help you. Just as Sagnard had a flurry of thoughts in that fleeting moment, so did Sina. It was clear that her brother was under some significant misunderstanding. Unconfessed feelings. They had already expressed their emotions to each other and even shared a kiss. But was that of any importance right now? Sena focused on Sigurd's offer to help. Didn't it imply that she had gained an absolute ally who was unequivocally on her side? Anais and Christina were like wolves. Mer had informed Sena how cunningly Anais and Christina had acted in the Lionheart House, using their status as the saint capable of wielding divine power. They've been healing minor injuries of the Lion Heart Knights every day and accumulating goodwill, haven't they? Undoubtedly, the name the wise Sienna carried significant weight in the Lion Heart Manor, but how would everyone perceive a relationship between a 21-year-old young man and an art wizard who lived for 300 years? Would the Knights of Lion Heart not think that the young saint in her twenties suited Eugene better than their, their forefathers' comrade? Age was not important, especially for a wizard like Sienna. Age truly was just a number. Even so, she felt bothered by it, which meant that Sienna didn't think of age as simply a number. Sienna tried not to be conscious of it. Um, um, I'm not exactly sure what you're saying, brother, but if you're offering to help, why would I, your younger sister, refuse? Responded Sienna. Then I will help you right now. You love Hamel. No, we can't use that name here not in front of everybody. 
Sir, we tell everyone that you love Eugene, suggested Sigurd. Alfs didn't understand the hearts of humans, and this fact was hammered into Sena once more. Are you insane? Stop this nonsense, brother. Just, just stay put for now. Don't do anything until next time I need your help. Sina quickly interrupted Segnard, causing him to shut his mouth. They crammed the enormously large carcass of Rezekia back into the cloak. Afterward, Eugene, Christina, and Serena entered the manor under the awe-filled gaze of everyone. Why the long face? asked Eugene. What, what's wrong with my face? responded Jehud. You look like you've been holding in a dump for three days, is that how you want to look when you greet your son? who has returned after such a long time. Jehod's face crumpled at Eugene's joke, while glancing at his son, who was smirking mischievously. He also stole glances at Sina. Under normal circumstances, he would have reprimanded his son for making fun of him, but he couldn't do so now, not in the presence of the wise Sina. So Jehod Lionheart, Sina noticed that Gerhard was conscious of her. She gave a soft smile, she subtly shifted her body to the side, leaning her shoulder towards Eugene, and met Jehod's gaze. The successor I chose, Eugene Lionheart, was raised remarkably. Our feet entirely attributed to your efforts, Sir Jehod continued Sayana. No, not at all. I didn't do anything to raise my son. Did you not trust in your child and support all his needs and aspirations? Ahem, well, yes. Jehud's lips curled up at the compliment, in fact, even by his own assessment, Jehud didn't think he was a terrible father, after his wife's death, Jehud adjusted his entire lifestyle and ambitions to match his newborn son, Eugene, though it's hard to believe he's my son given how outstanding he is, he had never taught Eugene the sword personally, but, if Eugene needed a wooden sword, he immediately found it for him, he had done his best, finding Eugene a sword instructor if he asked for it. Sayana couldn't help but grin inwardly when she saw the tension slowly dissipating from Jehod's face. It was as expected. Complimenting his son had been the right answer. Sir. So.